Hey traders from around the world, what's going on? It's Jeremy Alexander Newsom with reallifetrading.com. The weather here in Nashville, Tennessee is absolutely sensationally stupendous right now. The bluest of the blue skies, the greenest of the green trees, everything is looking marvelous. Let's talk about the SPY. So the SPY made a little bit of a higher high and a higher low today. Welcome to a new 2016 high. Janet Yellen did have some chatter today, which we got a chance to watch live in the morning trading room. And uh, it wasn't really anything massively dis, um, disinterested into the stock market, regardless of the future or the past. It was all pretty much normal. So realistically, we had a really nice indecision candle on Friday. We did make a higher high and a higher low today. And per the last few weeks, uh, the same thing has been happening, right? We mentioned that this would probably occur and that and that's probably so far what looks like uh, what looks to be happening here's your hourly chart on the SPY and just looking at the hourly chart you'll notice nice little support right there from this gap action really strong gap here's a little bit of a resistance today uh, aka this morning you did have a nice black candle gapping up which is also a strong gap retested old resistance as new support bounce continue a little bit higher so honestly SPY looks like it's going to keep going up. I don't really see much going on here. Here's my analysis from this morning. Friday's a nice indecision. Candle gapping up shows like a continuation. The SPY breaks to 210.93 high. SPY should continue to 212.28 over the next one to two weeks. Yeah, that's pretty much about it. So there's the SPY. That's really all I've got on the docket for that one today. Let's go look at the Qs. Not too much to talk about on the Qs. Here's the Qs. Small white candle. Friday and Thursday, you had nice lower shadows representing some buying pressure we traded perfectly into the 10 exponential moving average on friday and again a little bit of resistance right here on the queues but i think overall we trade just a tad higher here's the russell etf iwm up 1.8 percent today i'm sorry 1.08 so looks like we're continuing let's look at some big name stocks here's apple now this wick is not accurate on apple so pretty much apple today I'm going to zoom in here to the hourly chart and kind of give you guys an idea of what I'm considering here on Apple. Here's your hourly, and I'll turn the moving averages off for just a moment and kind of give you my wave count. So realistically, I'm looking at like a one, two, three, four. I'm thinking this is going to be a five. Obviously, it doesn't have to be, but that's kind of what I'm going with. Had a nice indecision candle on Friday right there. A nice little pennant. We've broken out of that pennant pattern bullish today with good volume. So my thought process, again, this week is not accurate on TradingView, expecting it to pull back a little bit tomorrow and then buy the bounce, short term calls or stock or put sales or bullpit spreads, how are gonna be bullish on Apple? Makes a lot of sense. Here's your long-term moving averages. And yes, that's gonna be a resistance for sure. But looks like overall, this move is bullish. This is probably some type of bearish flag and will probably slowly scooch higher on Apple more than likely because the last time we did the exact same thing on the 100, battled it, got a flag pattern, end up breaking higher into the 200, probably what we do again. So a lot of us got a 105 covered call for June that expires in two weeks and uh, probably will expire worthless on Apple. Here's Google. It's still within the range. Not much is happening. I like this little move right here, and I am keeping my eye on very, very closely on Google right now for a short-term bullish bounce. Got a nice little short-term trend like that. So I think if we trade just a little bit lower on Google, I'll be looking to buy the bounce, or of course, all, all the way down to 701 if it trades under there, also considering a buying the bounce opportunity uh, on Google. So just kind of hanging out on that one at the moment. Tesla, take a simple TSLA. We are still in Tesla bullish by the uh, hair on our chinny chin chin. We got a nice bullish candle today. We increased the stop mm -hmm. now from 202.35 all the way to 214.21. So this particular juncture, probably tomorrow, I'll move it up just another penny or two right below mm -hmm. the lows of these candles. And hopefully uh, Tesla continues higher. I, mm -hmm. I still am relatively bullish on Tesla. We, we've mitigated the risk very, very well. But you do have short-term and long-term moving averages to kind of con uh, battle with here. So just keep in mind that I personally am a little bit more bullish than bearish on Tesla. Rig today had a gorgeous candle, really nice volume coming in. It does appear that Rig does have a big triangle perspective, and I have been bullish on Rig for a while, hoping to get some shares at some point. Have been doing put sales pretty much this entire time, and we have a June week four eight dollar put sale on RIG. A lot of volume today, big candle. 
you have four white candles or four bullish candles in a row. So my thought process on the rig would be wait for a little bit of a pullback to retest this double bottom triangle kind of feel and then buy that dip, buy the bounce, RIG in a nice buy low, sell high location. CLF has been absolutely going gangbusters. Beautiful bullish gap and go. And for all of my Trader Planet fans um, or just stock analysis fans, Robert Meek, a lot of other traders out there have been bullish on CLF. I did post uh, on CLF a nice little uh, nice little write up. I just figured I'd hop over here and throw that information your way. Uh, click on commentaries. If you guys don't have a Trader Planet account, it's a great website. Awesome content. But here you go. Are you watching Natural Eclipse Resources now? So that was back on the 2nd of June saying, all right, guys, this one's bullish. Uh, so the 2nd of June, that's when it published. I actually wrote it on that day on the 31st of May. But either way, really nice move. Trade higher if you are in Cliffs Natural Resources. Based on that gap, based on that volume, I got some longer term targets. Uh, 649 is probably the next one. Now, I got a long way to go before it hits there, but you know, should be interesting and should hit that at some point in time, I would imagine. Price line today breaking out with some good volume. Uh, price line really, really good. Bullish candle coming in. Short term resistance here, short term support there. Uh, notice it did kind of gap down on earnings. You got this long, lower hammer ish candle. And pretty much my analysis was hey, if it closes above 112, 84, I'll be more bullish than bearish and close below 112.03. I'll be more bearish than bullish. It did close bullish and now we're approaching a resistance. So for those of you who are in price line, add a little bit of resistance, consider making tickets and profits or potentially doing a covered call if you have enough shares. Pay, ticker symbol P-A-Y, earnings coming up very soon on the 7th. So just some analysis on this one. A lot of people requesting this particular stock. Really, really good support right here. So if P-A-Y opens at 25.32 or lower on earnings, a lot of people are gonna be selling there because they're gonna be trapped. Very, very strong gap. If PAY opens above 30 on earnings, uh, you do have a really good bullish candle today. So if it opens at 30 or above, I would expect a small sell and then buy the balance on ticker symbol PAY. So it really depends on how this one's gonna make move on earnings, but a possible invert head and shoulders pattern right here with a really, really good neckline around 29.54. So just something to keep in mind on that one. A few other updates, CBI. Chicago Bridge and Iron, as most of you know, we were in a bullish swing trade on this one. We hit our target, uh, one of our targets today, which was the 200 simple moving average. We've increased our stop to break even, and the next target is $40.80 on CBI. Here's 3D, 3D printing, and haven't gotten triggered into this one yet. Been keeping an eye on it. Nice little double bottom. If this doesn't trigger by tomorrow, which it probably won't, I'll end up canceling the 3D um, bullish swing trade setup, and I guess I'll have to be happy that the put sale is there, the $12 put sale expiring regular June. Here is Nugget, took example, NUGT, huge gap on Friday. It was a retest gap, so white candle, bullish candle gapping up with volume. So if you're looking at playing Nugget, uh, we did retest today. Keep your eyes on this particular stock because this kind of candle, this kind of gap is really quite monstrously strong. And uh, I think a little bit of a pullback on NUGT looks viable to me. And last but not least, let's talk about VRX. VRX trading in this nice consolidation down here, nice little accumulation phase. It isn't a buy low, sell high, but with earnings coming up, keep a very, very close eye on this one. I think if earnings uh, really causes VRX to gap down, the stock probably is going to go to zero. Very, um, very volatile stock right now under a lot of scrutiny, under a lot of investigations, a lot of uh, governmental agencies have their nose in on this one on VRX. So we'll see. Um, yeah, so here's your exponential moving averages on VRX and the 50 exponentials at 3502. So if we gap up, but we don't open above there, I'm gonna have a little bit of a bearish bias on VRX. Looks like a small channel, and again, a gap up could be a good place for people to sell who haven't sold yet. Uh, so anyway. I'll be keeping my eyes on VRX. If you're looking to play a really, really aggressive, kind of a roulette style trade, VRX would be one. It isn't a buy low, sell high location, but just don't put all of your eggs into that toaster because uh, if you know VRX doesn't do good on earnings, that could be something that really, really heads south quickly. Anyway, just my thoughts. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching this Monday Real Life Star Review. June is conservation month here at Real Life Trading. Get out, enjoy the nature, uh, enjoy enjoy the nature, <laughs> enjoy the nature, enjoy the weather.
Take some beautiful pictures. I'd love to see where you guys live. Stephen, ja uh, Stephen King, thanks so much for sending me the video the other day with you by the lake. The picture of you by the lake, that was really beautiful, man. Thanks for sending my way. Guys, girls, traders, legendettes from around the world, thanks so much for watching. Have a great rest of your Monday and Tuesday. I'll see you Wednesday for the next free real-life stock review. And until then, remember, love life, live life, and trade. See ya.